<laughs> Praise God. Are we in Luke chapter 22? Verse 39. And he came out and went as he went to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening in him, and being in, in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you once again, hallelujah, for the opportunity to stand before these, your beloved sheep, O oh God, the sheep of your pasture, Father God. We pray, Father God, for your mercy and your grace, your hand to be upon us today as we receive the engrafted word which is able to save and deliver us. God, I'm asking your anointing upon me that your thoughts might flow through me, Father God, as I open my mouth loudly and widely, hallelujah, to declare, Lord God, your word. Now, we come against every foe to faith, any spirit that will try to hinder us. We rebuke it right now in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Father, for good success in this endeavor. And those that agree with that say amen. amen. God bless you. You can have your seats. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, as I said uh, earlier, amen, I taught for two hours yesterday, amen. I'm a little, just a little bit weary in my physical body, amen. But I know you, some of y'all, my son told me when I called him, he told me, I'm praying for you, amen. He said he couldn't make it. It's his anniversary. He's uh, celebrating his anniversary. And so, amen, he told me he praying for me, and I believe y'all praying for me too, Amen. You better be. You left your house. Amen. You, some of y'all drove a long way. Amen. You came up in here to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We, we, I want to bring a word called let your new man out. Let him out. We were singing earlier about those grave clothes and we were taking them off. Praise God. Now we're not talking about trying to have a nudist camp or nothing like that. Brother Fats, we're talking about glory to God. Hallelujah. Living. Hallelujah. From the inside out. Praise the Lord. You see, today we live in a world, amen, that is geared toward self-fulfillment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We live in a generation, amen, where men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Praise the Lord. Men and women's lives today, amen, they seem to be centered around self, amen. Praise the Lord. Their personal desires, their plans, amen, their enjoyment. Amen. Our lives are centered around what's in what's our future, what we're going to do tomorrow, what we plan on doing next year. Amen. Come on, somebody. Our, our lives tend to be centered around our families, our friends, uh, our home, how we're going to decorate it, what we're going to fix up, what we're going to do. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Some people's lives are, amen, centered totally around their career. Amen. Can't give God nothing but to get that job, everything. Y'all ain't going to help me today. Amen. Glory to God. Some of our lives, amen, are centered around what makes us happy praise the lord our personal satisfaction amen 
I'm here to tell you in a world that's geared, amen, to self, amen, how are we going to empty ourselves just like Jesus did? You got to understand in the book of Luke, Jesus, amen, was facing, amen, a future, amen, glory to God, a pain, a future of sorrow. He knew, amen, in the not too distant future, he was going to be hanging on a cross. He knew that, amen, everybody that he had invested time in, amen, his closest, amen, glory to God, disciples, amen, they was going to run and forsake him. They was going to act like they didn't even know him. How are we going to empty ourselves? How are we going to get to the place that where we can discern God's will for our lives? How are we going to recognize, amen, how to move in the things of God when we consistently, constantly walk in rebellion, amen, to God, following our own will instead of walking in obedience to God's will? I knew it was going to get quiet about this time. Hallelujah. The answer is very simple. We have got to come out of this world where self-will and self pleasing rules the day Amen. we've got to yes, I was teaching yesterday and I begin to tell the saints amen glory to God and this is not to offend anybody but the problem is we have developed a westernized concept of the gospel Y'all ain't going to help me in this place. And y'all ain't going to help me on Facebook or YouTube. But I know somebody out there just text amen if you understand what I'm talking about. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have developed a westernized concept of the gospel. We come to, we, 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 are, we talk about what nation is developed and what nation is not developed. We talk about nations that developed and what nations the third world. But I'm here to let somebody know that the God I serve, hallelujah, glory, he has a different concept of what development means amen God when he talks about development amen glory to God and imp improvement he ain't talking about roads he's not concerned with infrastructure he don't care how tall your buildings is matter of fact he proved it the tallest building he tore it down at the at the tower of Babel that does not concern him he's not concerned praise the Lord with your airplanes and your Bugattis and all that other kind of stuff that don't move God what God calls development is how close this mind hey man lines up to the will of God you ain't helping me up in this place see when you study the word of God amen glory to God see this westernized gospel it always tries to interweave itself somehow into the financial institution I'm in trouble man I didn't want to go there but the Bible says this Found in James chapter 2 and verse 5. It says that God has chosen the poor in this world who be who are rich in faith. Now, now, now he wasn't talking about running around being poor like that. But he was talking about there's a place, amen, where people there that he was he was talking about a concept that when folks can't aren't relying on money, now they're relying on God. I said, when they're not relying on money, they're relying on God. That's why Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Some translations say God and money. The Bible also says this is the love of money. That's at the root of all evil. If I was to, give, if I was to stop preaching and give you a history lesson, I would tell you that every civilization that called itself advanced, it advanced itself on the backs of some other nation. I'm in trouble. Raped, robbed, and ripped off countries. Stole all their stuff. And the shame behind it all, they did it all, and some of them did it in the name of Jesus. I'm in trouble. I said they did it in the name of Jesus. It's funny how, glory to God, we know how to put Jesus in our back pocket when we want to get something we want. Come on, somebody. Huh? They said that, they said that nowadays there's a man that's running for president. He said he's God's man. I said, what do you mean? Hold on a second. Don't get mad at me here, y'all. Glory to God. Come, don't get mad at me in the name of Jesus. They're saying these things. They're saying he's God's man. God's going to use him. I'm saying, well, if God can use him, 
with all his mess, God can show you the other one. Y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. Don't don't y'all ain't hearing me in this place. I'm 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 tired of politics coming into the church. It, it's time out for that madness. Try, you know that's that westernized thing trying to creep up into the church to cause division and cause discrimination. Back in the 50s and the 60s when folk used to go to vote, especially down south. And I'm going to get back to my message. This, this just on my back and I just got to, I, I got to ride this thing till it gets off my back, y'all. Amen. And people would try to go to vote and folk would sit up there and be the poll watchers. They outlawed that kind of stuff because that was a form of intimidation. You ain't hearing me up in this place. Folk would intimidate you that if you go to vote, praise the Lord, they would take your farm and they would do all, raise the price and do all, come burn your house, burn a cross on your front lawn y'all ain't gonna help me preach today but i'm a preacher like i feel it we, we ain't got no business trying to intimidate nobody hallelujah whatever decision you make praise the lord it's supposed to be personal it's between you and god praise the lord ain't, the preacher ain't got no business telling you who to ain't got no business and he still need to keep his mouth off of us Amen, somebody. Y'all don't like me to preach like this here. See, when I see somebody backing somebody, they're just crooked inside and out. I be wondering what's in it for you. What you getting out of this thing? Don't tell me you're concerned, concerned about ba babies that are not born yet. I'm concerned about them. What about the ones that's born? What about the ones that's walking? What about the ones that's talking? What about, what about the ones that's here? See, it's your politics that separated families at our southern border. They got some children still don't know where their mama's at because of somebody's crazy policies. Now, now I don't have the answer to everything, but I know that's not the answer. That can't be the answer. Glory to Jesus' name. Going into countries, praise the Lord. Glory to God. They don't even have infrastructure. The only thing you're doing is taking all of their goods, their minerals. Y'all ain't going to help me. Taking these countries' raw materials at a cheap price. Taking the raw material, developing the raw material, and then selling it back to them at a high price. And you think God is into that? When I read this Bible, I find out that the God I serve is a God of love. I find out that the God I serve, he's a God of justice. Come on, somebody. We can't, listen, we can't start majoring in the minors, praise the Lord. We need to major in the main thing that God talks about. Treating your neighbor right. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Come on, somebody. Having compassion. Having mercy. I almost got it off me now. I had to get it off me. Whew. Do y'all think I got it off me? I was looking at a at a taping of the great Gilbert E. Patterson, the late bishop of the church of God in Christ. He was preaching. They gave us you know, some excerpts from a sermon he was preaching. And we understand how the church of God in Christ came about. It was because at Azusa, a brother named William Seymour allowed God to use him. And he got baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That was in Los Angeles, California. In a place we called Azusa. Y'all ain't hearing me. And because. He didn't look like everybody else. There was a. A rift that happened. There was a separation. Based on race. Where the black church had to go this way. And the white church went that way. That's how we developed. The assemblies of God. And the church of God in Christ. 
But Gilbert Patterson, some years ago, now he's passed way by probably 10 years ago. I don't, I don't know for sure. But this, this excerpt I was looking, it was really grainy and everything. So it might have been 20 years old. But he was preaching at a convocation. That's a place where all the different denominations, they all come together. Black people, white people, Hispanics, all over the world. They was all in one place they was preaching. And he was the keynote speaker. And he was preaching from the book of Ezekiel. He was talking about the dry bones. Come on, somebody. And he was talking about, he said, I hear a wind blowing. You, you know when the, when, the, when the prophet said, can these dry bones live? He said, then a wind came. The Bible says a wind came. He said, there's a wind blowing. Hallelujah. That's bringing us together. There's a wind. He, been, he went down to history of how the two, the, the church of this, the assemblies of God and the church of God in Christ came to be. But he said, there's a wind blowing. Praise the Lord. But at the end of this excerpt, he says, in the only thing, he said, there, there is no power that can separate us. He said, the only thing that can separate us politics he said that it looked like 25 years ago politics because there's only one Lord one faith and one baptism but when we start getting into politics <laughs> huh then it goes into self because you vote let's, let's, let me go there we vote for what benefits us What, what's best for you may not be what's best for me. So how are you going to tell me to vote against what's best for me? I'm voting for what's best for me. You, you ain't hear me up in this place. I said I'm voting for what's best for me. Amen. I ain't voting for what's best for you. Amen. You can be in the same family, the same household. And your wife could vote what's best for her. And the husband can vote what's best for him. And when we get done putting that piece of paper inside the little slot, when we come home, we're going to still kiss each other. Somebody say me, man, up in here. It's a personal thing. So folk need to get up out of people's business in the name of Jesus. Now, now I'll get back to my message. I think I'm all, I'm, I'm, I'm all the way off that horse now. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are many Christians today who do not know and are not doing the will of God. I'm just going to see it's, it's starting to weave back in there, y'all. I'm trying to I'm trying to get off of it, but it's coming up in here. They, they're not doing the will of God because their minds, their attitudes, their desires, and their wills have been conformed to the world. To be able to know what the will of God is. We have got to live our lives in obedience to the will of God. We've got to get rid of these worldly attitudes that have been programmed in our mind. Our minds must be renewed. I come here to say unequivocally that a person can have all the money in the world and still walk around with a reprobate mind. Come on, somebody. Can have a hotel and a golf course on every continent, but still have a reprobate mind. Y'all ain't going to help me preach today. Ain't got nothing to do with your money. Your money is what got your mind corrupted in the first place. You're thinking you above the law because you can pay your way out of everything. But you ain't going to be able to pay your way out of hell. Somebody say amen up in this place. See, people forget that the Bible says, Whatsoever a man sowed, that's what he going to reap. Somebody. 
God is going to pay for all the folks they killed in Mexico. Somebody's going to pay for everybody they killed in South America. Somebody's going to pay for everybody they killed in Africa. Somebody going to pay for everybody they killed in India. Somebody going to pay for everybody they killed in Australia and in New Zealand. Somebody going to pay. How many futures have you aborted? Through your policies. Y'all ain't helping me up in this place. They don't like me preaching like this here. Hallelujah. How many futures have you, how many, how many generations did you mess up for your, for, for your self-engrandizement? I was talking to somebody the other day. My wife, she's somebody. Praise the better be somebody. Amen. Hallelujah if I'm going to get in trouble. Amen. And we were talking about welfare. Welfare has a place, a purpose, and a time. There's times where you may need it. But something happened early on. When they begin to dispense the welfare, they ain't going to admit it, but it messed up a whole bunch of family structures. I'm in trouble, man. They made it in many cases where the woman can get welfare. And for a while there, how much she got was based upon how many kids she had. But there was a caveat to it. There was a caveat that was more destructive than that. The, the, the caveat was the man couldn't be there. And y'all got the nerve to preach that how the, the, the family structure is all messed up when y'all the one that did it. Basically what, a, what, a, what policies did was diminish the role of the daddy, the father, the man in the household. It made him worth nothing but a seed. They don't like me preaching this here. Made him worth nothing but a seed. And some of y'all say, well, he should have got a job. Don't, let, don't make me take you down memory lane. Because I'm talking about the times, glory to God, where y'all wouldn't even giving them no jobs. But we made it anyway. I said we made it anyway. I said we made it anyway. I said we made it anyway. Glory to God. Yes, we did. I said we made it. Mama might have had to go and clean people's houses. But we made it. Glory to Jesus' name. Drag us to church with the same church clothes on every Sunday. But we made it. Glory to Jesus' name. Somebody testified about how they didn't have no food. But they sought the Lord and they prayed to God. And one morning they got up and went to the front door and somebody left all kind of food on their front door. Won't God do it? See, the deal is we've got to lose this Western gospel mentality and get back, glory to God, to what the... See, what's important... Listen, all of you Bible scholars. It's important to get in this Bible buy an atlas, buy a history book so you can see where this gospel originated at. And you will find, glory to God, come on somebody, you will find, glory to God, that the mentality got hijacked. The attitude, the love got hijacked and it got replaced, glory to God, with capitalism so they didn't, re they didn't interwoven capitalism in the Bible, in the gospel message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folk got so bodacious with it, Brother Ken, that in order to get a miracle, you had to sow a seed. Uh, 
I'm trying to get off this horse, y'all. In order to get your miracle, you had to sow a seed. Or sow a seed for some miracle spring water. Or sow a seed to get this trinket to remind you of the blood of Jesus. Y'all don't want to help me preach. And they bamboozled a whole bunch of us. And for a while we rolled, we, we ran with that stuff until we got in this Bible for our own self. And said, glory to God, that, 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 that same Jesus, he, he, he's not just a history Jesus. He's a right now Jesus. He's an alive Jesus. He's a Jesus that walks with me. He's a Jesus that talks with me. He's a Jesus that tells me no where I'm at. He ain't going to leave me nor forsake me. He's a Jesus that lives on the inside of me. Y'all ain't going to help me. And he speaks to me, glory to God, in the wee hours of the night. Sometime he talk to me in the middle of the night to tell me what to do in the morning. Y'all ain't going to help me up in this place. And I praise him. He will see you through. You got to let this new man out. You see, glory to God, this Western mentality that it got you in a straight jacket. My God helping me preach. Got you in a straight jacket. It got you bound. But glory to God, God wants you to be loosed. Don't you want to be loose like Peter and Paul and them? Hallelujah. When Peter walked through the streets, he was so sold out for Jesus that his shadow would hit folk and folk would get healed. They were so sold out, glory to God, that Paul, glory to God, they would clip some stuff off of his apron, praise the Lord, and give it to people and demons would have to flee. I'm trying to tell you, if the Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it way back then, he's looking for somebody who's going to think like they thought way back then, act like they thought, act like they live way back then, do what they did way back then, live like they live way back then, so they can get the same miracles that they got way back then. Now somebody give my God some praise. drinking the Kool-Aid. Stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Get back in this Bible. Get find your roots. I, I pre that, that was the message. Find your roots. Your roots ain't in Europe. Find your roots. You'll find that your roots is in this Bible. The Bible says if you're in Christ, you're Abraham's seed. And an heir according to promise. That's your roots. God is where. Remember the old days. Somebody new moving next to you. You ring the doorbell and welcome them to the neighborhood. Bring them some cookies. Or like Sister Zamata, Sister Abdulia. Bring them some tamales. Woo! Them tamales were so good. Oh God, they had to be good. I heard I was in there meditating, and since I heard Sister Sister Sesame get on the phone and call her, them tamales were good. Now, now, one thing I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna get back to my message, but that we got one problem. See, your hot and my hot, they two different levels. What you call mild is hot. I didn't even mess with that stuff and that little thing. That, that stuff made, put a melt the plate. Ooh. But we were neighborly. Come on, somebody. We spoke to each other. Now we got it so where somebody moving the neighborhood. Let me see what they driving. What they, who lives in that? Y'all know what I'm talking about? The Bible is about treating each other right. Yes, yes, yes. Say, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Help me preach somebody. Yes, yes. Treating everybody right. Yes. Not dogging people. Mm -hmm. See that dogging people? 
That didn't come from this Bible. It, it did not come from this word. See, it's funny how people can dog each other and, and try to cover it up with the word. It, you, you know, we, me, Mother Dixon came up with this. Now, this ain't on me. And, and I, I'm really, I, I don't even know where I got all these notes here for. She said this on the way to church. She said, on top of that, if a felon can't get a job, how in the world a felon going to run for the presidency? That's what Mother Dixon said. So y'all got a problem with that. Y'all, y'all, she said that on the way to church. Okay, how come a person with all them convictions then? Let's say that. We can roll this thing all kind of way inside out and backwards. Hold on. Let me preach. People are going to start questioning your background. You know too much. <laughs> Praise God. See, but that's what they're running with. Listen. But that's what they're running with. That's but, but that's what they're running with. They're running with they didn't got these. See, our laws are not are we we are become a nation that argue over words. That's what it's about. We argue over words. That's how we were able to take certain territories from people. We we do a, an agreement. This is where you can live at now. And the three hundred and some odd times we we reneged on it. We can do that because it's words. You can, in some states, you can be behind on your taxes, your house tax, you know what I'm saying? Your property taxes, and they can take your house. I saw it on TV the other day. Person owed 3,000 something dollars, house worth 300 some dollars, 300 some thousand dollars. They took the house, sold the house. The lady went back to try to get, okay, well, give me the difference. They said, no, we sold, the, we sold that note to another co company. So they're taking houses. They, they, they are really doing that. They, you get behind on your stuff, they take your house. That's this government. You hear what I'm saying? Now let me get back to my message before I get in trouble with God because I've been wrong. I, I, I was in, had old knowledge. Y'all, folk, they be fresh out. They be having some, some, some new stuff. They tell you some stuff. Amen. I know, hey, it was a time, glory to God. I got a brother that was in jail 27 times. And he had to move to another state to get a job. Because down there in Georgia, they wasn't, they wasn't giving them no jobs. Mm -hmm. The emptying of self is a continual process. Y'all with me still? As God reveals to you the areas in your life where you are following your own self instead of walking in obedience to his will, you must be willing to surrender that area to God just like Jesus did. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Jesus said, if thou be willing, if thou be willing, Figure out, find, come up with another way for me, for me basically to redeem mankind. Come up with another way. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Church, as God reveals to you areas in your life, well, you where you have put your selfish desires, this is this is real, your goals and plans above doing his will. You and I must be willing to surrender them to God and say, not my will, but yours be done. As he reveals, somebody gonna get mad at me as he reveals areas in your life. Possessions, money, houses, land, prestige, position. Now, 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 here's another thing. I, I'm not one of those that's about donating your house to the church. No. Mm -mm. I, I'm not. Some churches ask people to do that. I'm, yes, they do. They ask you to donate your house to the church. 
after you pass, write in your will that it goes to the church. I'm not doing that. Because people have families. People have children. People got nephews. Nieces. Grandkids. There are times when we have put family members, friends, our careers above doing the will of God. You and I must find place in our hearts to be willing to relinquish all claims to what we want to do to put Jesus and the will of God first. Not my will, but thine be done. You want to know how come? You can go to a foreign country, lay hands on the sick, and they recover. Not next week. I'm talking about right then. Because somebody sold out. It could be that they walked 25 miles to get to that meeting. That was in the jungle. In a hut. Without, with shoes made out of car tires. They sold out. They paid the price. Y'all ain't going to help me today. That's what it's about. See, when we truly, truly want to be in the will of God, we got to deny this self. Huh? If the pastor say we're going on a three-day fast, you start hearing groans. And excuses. Help me. We'll start hearing groans and excuses. I said we'll start hearing groans and excuses. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about no partial fast. I'm talking about three days on water. If we do that. Look at everybody start looking at me then. Now, now, now he better not, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying we forget that you ain't gonna die you're not gonna die people have been left in the wilderness deserts all kind of places and lived it's proven but the problem is this flesh this flesh going to beat you all upside your head. That, and it's going to start, Brother Ken, it's going to start with a headache. The top of your head ain't going to be hurting. He going to be, it's going to be hurting from the inside. And then your stomach going to start talking to you. And then you're going to agree with it. And then you're going to be saying, I can't do this. I can't do this. Y'all ain't helping me today. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you to have the power of God flowing in your life. You're going to have to give up something. Come on, somebody. See, there are certain things in God that's not negotiable. The new man can't come out, glory to God, when the old man is on the throne. At some point in time, Sister Kedra, you got to give up your zuzus and your wham whams. Amen, somebody. You got to let them cookies go, Pastor Sessom. And, 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 and get rid of all them chocolate. What were them things? Bro oh, Lord, them brownies. Hey, I got rid of two packs of mine. I gave mine to Sister Dorothy for a housewoman present. Get this stuff out my house. Didn't I? I sure did. Hallelujah. And some of y'all think that's funny, but hey, them still were talking to me. I mean, you grab four, four fit in your hand. Don't try to act like y'all ain't did it. You can go to that thing, pop that top, and grab four of them. Just like that there. Throw one of them and talk about two bites. One can fit in your mouth and it starts melting. I said, Jesus, not my will. But yours be done. Doctor told me, he said, your, your, your blood pressure been going up a little bit. I said, I don't want no medicine. He said, he says, no, it's not that bad. He said, you might have white coat syndrome. Every time you see a, a, a doctor, your blood pressure go up. 
But then I started doing it at home by myself. And it was creeping. Talked to the doctor. I talked to him tomorrow via video. And he said, if you lose about 10 pounds, he said, your blood pressure will come down. But them cookies. Y'all ain't helping me up in this place. Every time I make up my mind, I'm not going to do it. Cookies. Something will show up. Cakes. Tamales. <laughs> Sister Kedra, hold your peace. Hold your peace. See, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, walk into something. I'm trying to walk out of something and into something. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. The will of God. The will of God is not for me to walk around, you know what I'm saying, sick. See, you can get to a place. There's a, there, listen, I call it a dividing line. Once you cross it, you, you, it, it's almost like there's a, what word am I, an avalanching effect. This negative thing affects something else and brings a negative, neg another negative thing, and then the other thing affects the other thing, bring another. Ne so now you, you know, now you got to. It's like your oil in your car. Y you know, you ain't changing your oil, you ain't changing the cooling in there, and and, and the car still running, but it ain't. It's running hotter than it need to. So all them plastic devices that they didn't start putting in engines, y'all know all them sensors. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. Let me look over here with these brothers over there. They know something about some cars. They, it's in like all the sensors in the car that they help you pass smog is made out of plastic. Now, you ain't, you've been neglecting all the other stuff and then there's some little old sensor that they're going to charge you $450 to change out. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? And all because you was neglecting some other little simple thing. It caused some other catastrophic failure. The same thing with our health. We got to take care of this body. The new man want to come out. You can't live healed. You, just because you hit a certain age, you ain't got to break down. Don't get mad at me. You, ain't got, you do not have to break down just because you hit a certain age. They don't like me preaching like this here. They pastor, where did that come from? I don't know. Maybe it came from Sister Hunt. I don't know. <laughs> but am I right about it? You do not have to break down at a certain age. We've accepted that as the norm. It ain't got to be the norm. I was looking at a man the other day named Dr. CB. CB. And he was saying about how you can chew this root over here and that root over there and I think he was, it looked like he was about at least 70 years old, and I ain't going to do what he did. But he was standing up on the stage, standing straight up, and then he just straight, boop, dropped to his knees. Now, to me to get on my knees, it takes stages. <laughs> they don't want me to preach. It I was going to do it, but I said, no, but I might have the grunt getting back up. Don't laugh, same thing to you. That's why they don't even pray on their knees no more in church. <laughs> I'm telling jokes now. But you hear what I'm saying? Watch this. Nice and slow getting down there. Trying to make sure I don't hurt nothing. And then now, now get up without touching nothing. I mean, your mind, you got to engage your mind. You laughing. So, <clears throat> hey. But just think if I was totally in shape. Huh? I just spring up like it ain't nothing. I'm just saying. There's certain things we're going to have to do. To get ourselves where it needs to be. To do the work of, do the work of God. Now stuff is jumping off in this nation I'm in, in the, around the world. I'm, I'm gonna put this up because I didn't I didn't deal with hardly none of this here. I didn't got into president stuff and they all kind of junk. But there's things that's happening around this world. 
Iran then got involved. Come on, somebody. You know, and they never tell, they never really tell us, Brother Ken, who really started it. It's it like football. I can pull your helmet and slap you, but the ref don't see it. He just see me retaliate. Now it's, I'm guilty. You get what I'm saying? You know, uh, but, but stuff's happening. North Korea then sent troops over to Russia. So I'm going to tell y'all what's happening. These people is tired of us sending missiles and torpedoes and drones. And they say, oh, no, 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 no. Well, you, instead of sending that stuff, send your own self over here. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Instead, you send, you send in weapons. Now, we're we going to do something where you got to come over here. Amen. And this nation's been blessed. Yeah. We, we've only had two basic attacks. One, really, one basic attack on, our, on this mainland. We had Pearl Harbor. We understand that. Yeah. But we, 9-11. And it, look, in 9-11 jacked up a whole bunch of stuff. A few buildings fell and took out the transportation industry. It took out, people lost their jobs. Huh? It took out a, that shows you how, see, that, I, I, there's so much I know, y'all, I'm trying to ease up. It just shows you, see, we, we boast, and, I, and I'm not anti-American, I want to let you know that right now, but I am for, I'm pro-right. And I ain't talking about Republican right, I'm talking about right, what's right. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm about what's right. We boast ourselves around the world like we're big, bad, we powerful. But our economy is just as fragile as the day is long. It is. Everything, everything here, we're, we're, we are an immature country. We try to dictate the countries that's got history. It's got history. The Pharaoh's tombs. You know what I mean? They were, but they were underdeveloped. The devil is a liar. How you underdeveloped when you can build a pyramid that tall, put a little hole way near the top, and you know how to refract light to where right light can get all through the thing all up in certain chambers and stuff. Somebody developed something. Somebody was in com communication with somebody that told somebody something. Mathematics. We both like we're the mathematical geniuses. Them dudes, man, they had they have some mathematics. Them, 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 them pyramids and that Sphinx, glory to God, has got to be some thousands of years old. Embalming folks. We d d now we don't have the t uh, brother John. We're going to have to cut this off, man. We're going to get in trouble. But, but no, no, he has a point. You know what his point is? If you understood what was going on in the dark, they called it the Black Ages. They had so much diseases and filth. They was throwing mess out the windows. What do you think happened to the indigenous people? They had so many plagues and diseases that it wiped them out. In other words, somebody was organic. <laughs> and somebody wasn't. I'm just trying to say. Y'all need to stop. But see, we're talking about this who's developed. Listen, when Jesus went preaching, and I'm going to stop in a minute. My time is up. Do you think Jesus said the name of what I'm preaching to you is called Christianity? That's a name we gave it. He came preaching, repent. Change how you think. He didn't put a title on it. He didn't put a label on it. He said, but the way y'all living ain't the way we're going to continue living anymore. Amen. He said, God's got a new covenant. Yeah, yeah. So you got to change your mind. Yeah. That's the development we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a mind that thinks 
in alignment with God. That's what he preached. That's what he preached. That's what he taught. And that's what we got to do. Do you catch what I'm saying? If you look at some countries, they kicking certain people out. I'm in trouble. You won't notice by sitting up there looking at CNN, MSBC, and, and, and uh, Fox now. They ain't going to tell you this, but there's a whole bunch of people saying we had it with y'all. How in the world is your currency, the dollar, going to be the number one trading currency around the world for international trade when y'all ain't even got no gold? They said, they're saying the currency of a country must be based upon something tangible that has value. Not a piece of paper. Just because y'all can print up a bunch of paper, that don't, no, we ain't rolling with that no more. Some countries are saying, glory to God, we kicking y'all out of here. We going to process our own gold. Y'all don't want me preaching like this here. I'm trying to tell you what's happening. We, this is what the Bible called perilous times. St this is where upheaval. And pe listen, people going to be scrapping and scratching for their place at the table. Come on, somebody. Because it's almost like the table that was is getting wiped off and a new table is getting set up. Y'all don't hear me preaching this here. I'm trying to tell you this here. A new table is getting set up. See, we try to make people believe that the only people that's Christians is us. But there's Christians all over the world. And God has given them wisdom too. He's teach. listen, he's teaching them how to live. Can I, can, I, can I have five more minutes? He's teaching them how to live. They're learning how to listen to God. You know, there's a place in the Bible where they call it, they say praise the name Jah, J-A-H. But the Hebrew alphabet, didn't have a J. It was a Y. Yah. Yah. And, and I remember seeing movies like, what good movie I like to watch? Rifleman. Gunsmoke. Death Valley Days. And I see what we call Indians. I don't call them that, but they, you know, they was lost and they thought they was in India. So they, but they be dancing. Listen, don't, 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 don't judge me, but just listen. They be dancing around the fire. Hiya, 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 hiya. They be saying, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they got in tune, but they got in tune. They knew something. I know this is crazy to some of y'all. Y'all saying, this man then lost his mind. No, this, you think like this from studying, from being observant. But, we, but they was calling them savages. Hiya, hiya, hiya. One time me and Renee went to Hawaii. To this Hawaii, and they had a tour, a Hawaiian village tour. And the sun was just shining. It was just beautiful and lush and green. Had a waterfall in this Hawaiian village, and they had the cliff divers. They was diving in the water, and then they said, "Now this next thing, this person is going to do a prayer. They're going to do a prayer for rain." The person got up there and did a prayer in whatever language they use in Hawaii, and it busted out raining. Y'all don't y'all don't understand what I'm saying. It really, but it, this was a re, this was not like some exhibit that, that somebody had made up. We was outside. The, the ground was real. The plants wasn't fake. They was everything was real. This person got up there and like they raised their hand to praise the Lord or whatever they did, and it started raining. We didn't mess some stuff up. We took the Bible, and I could take you to a whole kind of places. 
where we then took this Bible and we made it into a money making venture. I'm in trouble. Yes, there are principles in this Bible concerning giving. There's principles in this Bible concerning tithing. That's real. But some of that stuff that they're pulling ain't got nothing to do with this word. Some of the, way, some of the ways people are thinking got nothing to do with this word. And I'm going to tell you something. If you truly let that new man out, Kill that old man. I'm going to tell you, you'll find that God talk to you. He leads you. He make you sensitive to when danger is around you. You will just know. You, you will know. You'll be in tune. Don't you think it's strange? Anybody have lizards periodically in their backyards? Have you noticed? I'm not periodically. But, but I noticed the other day the lizards wasn't out. The lizards know when the season's going to change. They ain't got no watch. They have no calendar. They know. The other day, somebody said, what's all that noise? The ducks, the geese was on their way down to Mexico, down to South America. They ain't got no calendar. They ain't got no clock or no watch. But they know. You get what I'm saying? They just know. The lion, he creeps. He lays low on the Serengeti or in the bushes. Huh? Ain't nobody got to tell that lion, lion, this is how you escape. This is how you do it. He just knows. He know Y'all ain't hearing me in the play. He just knows. The leopard, with, even with the crazy looking speckles on him. The cheetah. He knows how to get himself in the proper environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't got the same kind of speckles on him, but he knows uh -huh. it is a camouflage. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. They know. Yeah. Why? Because they animals will obey God. Yeah. It's us that won't obey God. Yeah. I'm in trouble. I'm trying to stop. Always sending something out somewhere else to some other planet somewhere. And then me wondering how come every time we, we get done sending a rocket somewhere, some other bacterial type, microbial type disease pop up. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid self. Because we got a covering over this earth. It's a protection over this earth. You might call it the atmosphere, but it's there to protect us, to keep junk from coming in here. They don't like me to see. I watch National Geographic. They say it out in Alaska, way up under what they call the permafrost. They said back in some I forget how many decades ago or centuries ago, a whole, entire villages was being wiped out by some disease, and it wasn't that many of them. They were they were sparsely populated. It wasn't like they was living all up on top of each other. They were spread out, but some disease start breaking out. Some bacterial thing. And then they came to find out that they brought that with it, what happened was they looked in the ice and they said, oh, we see this stuff way deep down in the ice. That's the same thing that was killing these people. Well, how did it get there? They said, wait a minute, a meteor came. It broke through and when it came in, it brought some stuff with it. Y'all don't want to help me preach. We're the only ones that don't want to do what God told us to do. God ain't told nobody to go to Jupiter. I, I know this is corny preaching. God ain't told God told them to stay here, tend this garden, huh? manage this here. That's what we support with. Right here. Can I preach to somebody? Come on, how come the whales is coming up on the beach? They coming to kick you behind. Sharks used to not be here. They're coming to get you. they tired of you putting plastic all in the water. Y'all don't hear me preaching. They're tired of that junk. We always coming up with these bright ideas that we think is bright ideas. And it's destruction. 
See, it goes along with the, what, the, what the Bible says. It said the Bible says that the thoughts of man is evil continually. When he calls himself doing something good, it's good for him. It's good for self. It ain't good for nobody else but his own self. Y'all don't want to help me. Dumping junk all in the water, all in the ocean. Not certain fish you can't eat. Because it got junk all inside the fish. Y'all don't like me preaching like this here. Able to make a full grown chicken in a week. And wonder how come people getting cancer. Because you eating something that's still growing. You eating something that's still growing. It's got, it got stuff in it. Hormones. One of these days I'm going to release Sister, Sister, uh, Sister uh, Bernice on a Saturday or something. You're going to have some of us sick of eating. <laughs> you, do y'all understand what I'm saying? If we would obey God, if we would, God would talk to us. Sister, Sister Abdulia's mama, she, when we went to her house, I know I mentioned this a couple Sundays ago or last Sunday. That stuff she be chewing, I done threw a bunch of that stuff away. This weed, get this weed, where this weed keep coming from? This old plant. She said, she, said, That's got, she gave it a name. I, I called it a weed. He said, mama, chew that. Mama going on 91? When she be 91? In March. Dancing up the aisle. Some of y'all scared to do a, do a two-step up the aisle. Scared you're going to break something. Huh? We're doing something wrong. See, see I'm going to tell you what we're doing. We've been serving God with our mouth. But like the Bible says, your heart is far from me. I'm almost done. I need two more minutes of my five minutes. When I look up the when I look at the, the people in the Bible that they call a prophet, ain't none of them prophets prophesied no money. Them prophets prophesied, if y'all don't get right with God, destruction is coming to us. That's what all of them preach. That was their message. Get right with God. Hallelujah. Not get right with your political party. Get right with God. And I got news for somebody. When they was warned and warned and warned and warned and warned, God said, okay, here you go. Sold them into the, in the captivity. Babylonian, Assyrian, Roman. I found out something how the Romans got in charge of them. Shoot. Some of them Jews sold out, sold them out, sold out their own self. They did. You ever heard of Romulus and Remus now? Yeah. They sold, they sold. Crazy stuff. Yeah. We got to get right with God. Right with I, I, I got all the, I, thank you Jesus. I'm, I'm putting it up now. That's where it's at. Yeah. I don't know what you got to do. We got to get right with God. Yeah. Got to stop playing games. Yeah. Some of y'all believe that once you, you stuck your hand up in a service. said, Lord, I'll take that. I'll take that, Jesus. But you still doing every... When, when she was sitting up here talking about going to Beyonce's concert, I said, I bet nobody else had been nobody up in here bed. I've been at no Beyonce's concert. Y'all don't want to help me today. You stick your hand up in the service all piously. Oh. And go home and do what you're doing. Do, do what you've been doing. Living with somebody you ain't married to. Well, God, you know, uh, what, me, me and Elder Hunt was talking about that yesterday. He said, you be, I've been baptized. 
for the remission of my sins. So because you went in some water, halfway had your mind on how cold the water was. Or how hot the water was. How long it's going to take. And what's going to happen to me. And all that kind of stuff. Because I don't even know how to hold my breath that long. How long I'm going to be under that water? Huh? And you come up and they're teaching you, you oh, you're saved now. Mm -hmm. So now you basically you can do what you want to do. Some people going, are in, going to be in for a rude awakening. They're going to find out. Just because Jesus, Jesus told a lot of folk, he said, just because you say, Lord, Lord. Uh -huh. you're, you're, huh? He going to say, depart from me. Now, if you're going from him, where are you going? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Y'all paying attention to them kids. You need to be paying attention to what I'm saying. Because, see, some of y'all think that once you got saved 25 years ago, you can keep doing what you, you skip into the loo, my darling, all around the place. I got news for you. Some guy, God going to ask some of y'all, what you think that is? What's this? You're going to be sitting up there like, let me in. Come on, somebody. He's going to say, well, let, her, let me see your ID. Do I see the blood of Jesus on you? This is, this is serious business. This ain't nothing to play with. Stuff's happening. I ain't trying to scare you. But I remember the years they the preached messages had you scared. You know, you still had your Salem's and your coups and your parliaments and everything else in your pocket. Shoot. They say, you know, anything happened. Scared straight. I'm serious. I was preaching. No, I wasn't preaching at the time. I was at the missions, homeless. San Diego Mission. Down there trying to eat some soup. Trying to get some food. So you had to, in order to get some food, you had to listen to preaching. And this brother was preaching. He said, yeah, some of y'all come down here to get a bed. Some of you come down here to get some food. He said, but don't you, he said that's, what you, that's what you want to do. He said, but God and orchestrated your life to have you here so you could hear the word. That man preached. He gave an altar call. Now, I wasn't ready yet. My bread wasn't done. I sat up there and was talking to the dude. Me and him was, was, was talking back and forth most of the sermon. And that brother, when the man gave all the call, I told the brother, I said, man, I got a dollar. How much you got? He said, I got a dollar 25. I said, yeah, man, after this is gone, let's run down to the liquor store. Let's get us a short dog, man. Let's get one of them. You know, you can get a dollar. Back in the day, you can get a, like a night train for a dollar 25 cents. You know, short dog. You know, we're gonna, you know, it, well, we're gonna do, we're gonna get it. And that brother come get. I said, "Where you going, man?" He said, "Shoo." He looked at me and said, "Man, my family gone. I'm separated from my kids. I don't even." He said, "I'm going up there to get me some prayer." Amen. He was serious. He was serious. He heard, and he went to go get what he needed. He come to conclusion. I wasn't ready yet. I was just, shoot, I'm going to get my get me some soup and some bread and stuff. And shoot, I'm going to go kick it up on the, you know, I'm going to run down here on 12th and see what's happening. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't stabbed up yet. You hear what I'm saying? In other words, the heat was on me and I didn't recognize it. I heard that. And I just heard something. I did all that laughing, all that joking. But the heat is on somebody in this room. And you came here. You came here. Because you need some prayer. You need some help. And God wants to help you today. I did a whole bunch of laughing and joking. But the, real, the, the, the bottom line is this here. If you look around at the news and look around what's going on. Unless you blind in one eye and can't see out the other one. Jesus is in fact soon to return. This is the fact. This is the fact. Stuff is lining up. So, listen. I think pretty soon I'm going to have to start teaching about Gog and Magog. I might have to start teaching about Armageddon. Because when you start seeing these Russians, people don't understand. That's where it's going to come from. You know, and if you really get deep into it, it talks about coming from the east. That's why Iran is. They call that Assyria. That was Assyria and Babylon was up in there. It's, it's, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. People say, well, where's the United? My wife asked me sometimes, say, where? I wonder, is we going to have to go down with all of them? I'm hoping, glory to God, that we don't have, that we go on the morning train, y'all. Yeah. The evening train going to be too late. Yeah. 
I want to go home on the morning train. But 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 to, but to understand also, there's other theology that said that we're going to go home in the middle of the train. Some stuff is going is going to be great tribulation. And we better have ourselves together. We better be in shape. You know the purpose of, of when they give you boot camp and, and all that stuff? It's to get you ready. You can't get out there in the middle of the battle and start saying, I should have did my sit-ups. <laughs> Flop that fence real quick. You got the whole line of people backed up because you can't get over the fence. You got people behind your butt trying to push you up over the... This is serious business, y'all. This is, this is called grace. Not the grace to let you get away with stuff. This is the grace to get yourself together. To be that church that God is calling for. Perhaps there's someone in this room. Now, you need to be perfectly honest with you. This is between you and the Lord. You know you have not been living the way you should be living for God. You know you haven't. You know you haven't. And you know good and well that if something happens, and anything can happen, if something happens to you, you're not even sure where you're going to go. You don't know whether, well, I've been good. Will my goodness get me in the, uh-uh. It's not no goodness that's going to get you anywhere. The Bible says it's faith in Jesus Christ alone that's going to get you to go to heaven. Do you, do, do you understand something? See, I don't know what they taught you in school about what, what happens when you die. Like, that's just it. You're just gone. The devil's a liar. You got a soul. You got a soul. And the Bible says, if you have not received Christ as your Savior, your soul is going to spend an eternity in hell. This is serious business. Serious business. This is what the gospel, this is the gospel message. God ain't mad at you. He ain't going to force you. He loves you. So he gives you a way. He gave us a way. He said, I'm going to send my son, Jesus, to this planet to pay the price that technically you owe. I'm going to pay this debt for you. He's going to die on the cross. He's going to bleed for your sins to pay the debt. But then he's going to be raised up three days later. He says, and all you got to do, it's very simple. All you got to do is just believe on him and you will be saved. Now, in a nutshell, I just, I, 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 I just preached the gospel and I want to give an invitation. Perhaps you're in this room and you want to get things right with the Lord. Maybe your life, the way it's going right now, you know it ain't the way it needs to be going. It can be much better. I want, if you're in this room, I want to ask you to stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet if you're in this room. Glory to God. And this message made sense to you. Stand to your feet. Now, not everybody, just the ones that...